But first, first up, we have Dan Slimmon. And uh, Dan has spoken to us before, and I think he's talking about something different today. Ooh, exciting. Things I learned at DevOps Days. I love it. All right, I need to give Dan a mic. Hi. I'm Dan Slimman, and I'm a DevOps. Um, I, uh, I volunteered as tribute in the Slack room uh, the DevOps MSP Slack room. If you're not in it, you should be. Um, there's a lot of good stuff happening in there. I volunteered to talk about some things that I learned at DevOps Days, uh, and I didn't quite remember which of the things floating around in my head I learned at DevOps Days, but I took notes. Um, so I remember some of the things. So here's some of the things I learned at, at DevOps Days. Um, by the way, this is the probably the least prepared I've ever been for a lightning talk. Uh, so don't, don't judge me. Um, we, um, we, one of the first talks that I heard was a talk by a guy, I don't remember his name, but his Twitter handle was dark and nerdy. Jeff, Jeff Smith? Yeah. He sounded super smart. Um, and he talked about, one of the things he talked about was how, uh, when we create a team for every goal that our organization has, uh, for example, you, your organization might have a, an ops team for stability and a security team for security and a, a feature development team, a team that builds features, right? Um, this is a problem, not intrinsically, but it's a problem because it uh, turns goal conflicts in the organization into conflicts between people. So uh, I just recently read uh, Decker, Sydney Decker's Field Guide to Understanding something or other. And human error, thank you, Bridget. Uh, and he talks about this a lot. So for example, if you're a, uh, an airline pilot, you have goals that include safety, not downing the plane and killing everybody. But that's not your only goal. You know, you also have the goal of getting customers to come back, being courteous to your customers who are flying on the plane so that they, they fly Delta again. Uh, you have the goal of uh, traveling quickly and in a straight line from one place to another so you use as little fuel as possible. Um, and in the moment, you're thinking you're juggling all of these goals, but when shit hits the fan, uh, people are gonna come back and they might say, well, you should have been treating security or safety as the number one priority um, because safety is our, our biggest mission. Um, so it's important to think about how uh, your organization has a, a bunch of different goals and sometimes they come into conflict and if you're not aware of the fact that sometimes these goals are gonna compete with each other, uh, then your organization is gonna make some, some terrible decisions. Uh, so what's, what else? So I went to this uh, open space on introducing DevOps, how to get your organization to, uh, to accept DevOps as a series of concepts. I work at an Internet of Things company that is pretty small, and uh, yet it has management that uh, comes from old school type software shops. Uh, so I was curious about this. And one of the things that really stuck with me from this open space was uh, we have a team that does new product development for customers that, are, that do custom stuff. Uh, and they get the thing done, they work for a while, they get the thing done, they ship it, and great, now the customer has the product. How do I get those people to accept that small batch sizes, fast iteration is uh, what we need to be focusing our money and our energy on? Somebody mentioned in this uh, talk that uh, those people are going to be very attuned to the idea that a lot of rework comes from uh, doing things that the customer doesn't end up wanting, right? You build something, you spend a bunch of time on it, and the customer's like, oh, that's not what I wanted. Don't, what, get rid of that. I don't like that. So if you can do 
you can uh, work with your development teams to create uh, a build pipeline that lets you do fast iteration, small batch sizes, and get that result to the customer quickly. You can learn very quickly what the customer doesn't want, uh, which lets you spend less time per project and get it right. Um, I organized uh, an open space that only three people, including myself, attended. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I uh, wanted people to come talk about non-tech books that they recently read. Um, raise your hand if you have read and or enjoyed uh, any of these books. Uh, Leviathan Wakes, the science fiction book. That's a good one? I should read that? Okay. It's been on and off my list. Uh, the Power of Habit. Yeah? What did you think of it? Good? You, you liked it? You learned something? Okay. Better Angels of Our Nature by Steven Pinker. Nobody? Okay, so that is a book about, um, he's like a pop scientist, and it's about uh, the idea that despite how fucked up everything seems right now, uh, we actually live in a time and play, but not just a time in the world when humanity is actually much better off than it was, say, 500 or 2,000 years ago. Uh, and he goes into a lot of uh, a lot of evidence to to prove this. So I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, okay. On the last day, this is the last open space I went to. I went to a security open space. Um, how to do DevSecOps or whatever they call it now. Uh, and I learned a lot of interesting. Uh, I learned a lot of good stuff because I, I've always been like, uh, don't make security my job. Like uh, security is good, but there should be somebody in charge of it. I don't, like, uh, that can't be part of the ops responsibility. Um, but I learned some good stuff. I learned that um, data classification, which I've always been skeptical about, is useful because it focuses your effort on what you, on, on what systems you need to protect. Um, I learned that uh, it's a good idea to just include in your build a uh, security analysis tool, and static analysis or whatever, uh, that uh, you can fail the build if there are more vulnerabilities than there used to be, but don't necessarily fail the build if there are any vulnerabilities, because that's, you know, uh, paralysis by perfection. Um, and uh, I learned about this thing called Samurai Web Testing Framework, which is a Linux live CD that you can put on your, that you can, you can put in and it'll like walk you through how to do uh, different different exploits and how to test for different vulnerabilities on on Linux, which I, I thought was a fun idea. Has anybody done that? Samurai seemed like a cool cool thing. And then finally, there was one thing I kept thinking about at, uh, at DevOps days that I was never able to figure out uh, to find somebody to, except Jason uh, Board Game Ops Jason to talk to talk to about, and it was this. Uh, so I sorry. Yes, thank you, Jason Clifford. Um, so uh, it was this. Uh, I was wondering recently, my, the devs at my company want to make a, um, have, have software and they want to record the number of requests per second per client. Uh, if we have 5,000 clients, that is going to result in 50,000 graphite metrics uh, and if we have more, it just doesn't scale that well. You know, some people have 50,000 graphite metrics and they do okay, but say you have, you know, twice that many clients or 10 times that many clients, it's not a good scaling factor. So what's the difference? And somebody, the, the Brian, Brian, the, the uh, Prometheus guy uh, pointed out, log it. Don't turn it into a metric. Just log it with the client ID and the latency and you can go back and do the analysis later. And it made me think, there must, th so I've never thought about the idea that, that there's metrics and then there's logs and there's some continuum between the two where, where one thing is better at, at a certain type of information and the other thing is better at a, another type of information and there, there's some things in between. Where do they go? Do I do that as a log or do I do, do that as a time series? And I've been trying to wrap my head around what that, what that continuum is and what the x-axis is. 
Um, I don't need this anymore. I've said thank you. Uh, ben, ben got me some uh, naproxen, so I don't need ibuprofen. And that's, that's, that's it. Oh, thank you. <laughs>